The British learned some serious lessons uh, after the Boer War. Uh, they learned that marksmanship mattered. Uh, they learned that long-range fire, when it's shot at you and it's precise, has consequences. And so they set about redesigning the Lee Enfield family of rifles, resulting in the short magazine Lee Enfield. And this was a 10-round detachable box magazine, 303 rifle, uh, cocks on clothes, a uh, very good rifle. But the British knew that another war would be coming, so they set about trying to improve the ballistics of their service rifle cartridge and also to go with an entirely new rifle. The uh, uh, British military wanted to go to a 276 rimless round to replace their rimmed 303. They developed a uh, rifle to chamber this round, but uh, as the conflict uh, drew closer, uh, it became obvious that you're not going to change your mili military round right on the eve of war. By 1913, they had a 276 cartridge and the Pattern 13 rifle. And this was going to be the next British service rifle. But of course, in August of 1914, the Germans uh, invaded uh, Belgium, France, and Britain was in a major war. Now, Britain knew a war was coming, and they decided not to change cartridges, even though the 276 was more ballistically efficient than the 303 British. The 303 British cartridge really was developed as a black powder cartridge for the Lee Metford. And when it comes to feeding in machine guns, when it comes to feeding in rifles, you know, rimmed cartridges probably aren't the best way to go, but it was the horse that Britain was riding in 1914. The basic problem with those rifles uh, is that there were, they were too much gun. They were too long, they were too heavy, they were too bulky. Uh, it would have been a great gun if it had had a 24-inch barrel and a pound less weight, which it really didn't need for 303. As England became consumed in World War I, it was obviously that they weren't going to be able to produce enough rifles to meet wartime needs, so they contacted uh, American manufacturers to produce the P-14 rifle. They contacted uh, Winchester and Remington. Uh, Remington uh, made these both at their uh, Ilian plant in New York and at a new plant set up primarily for this in Eddystone, Pennsylvania. So Winchester, uh, Remington Ilian, and the Eddystone uh, branch of Remington were all producing these for Great Britain. By the time Remington and Winchester and Remington's plant at Eddystone were really ramped up for production, the British had already upped Lee Enfield production to the point that they didn't really need them. The Pattern 14, uh, there was a, a sniper version of that, which used, there were two, two different versions of it. One used an, an offset uh, Aldous uh, scope, and the other one was overbore. They were very accurate, and those guns, uh, quite a few of them wound up in Ireland. And from there, they were surplused and came to the United States. Now, the American version of the Pattern 1914, the U.S. Model 1917 rifle, it's basically the same rifle, uh, but converted to 30-06. 30-06, of course, is a rimless cartridge, and uh, the U.S. Army Ordnance Department was looking for rifles when America entered the war in 1917, and they found three complete factories with tooling and workforces ready to make rifles for what would become the American Expeditionary Force. Of course, Pattern 14 rifles and USM 1917 rifles look virtually identical. Sometimes you have to check the markings. That's all the time that we have for this week. If you like this show and you're not an NRA member, you need to join right now. Go to AmericanRifleman.org. I'm Mark Keefe, and I'll see you next week right here on American Rifleman Television.